It's Jack, your connection coach. I want to talk about how your psychology and your limiting beliefs around human connection prevent you from exploring the full spectrum of human connection modalities, practices, and activities. If we aren't psychologically convinced that we're gonna benefit our community by introducing new techniques, getting them to do things they haven't done ever before, getting them to cry together, to laugh together, sing together, dance together. If we're not convinced, if we believe that we're going to make them uncomfortable, or we're going to intrude, or we're gonna force fun on them, then we're not gonna do it. So if you're watching this video, I want you to reflect what is blocking you from trying new things in your community? And ultimately, it, it's fear. It's fear of rejection. You're afraid of getting rejected by the group. But that fear is generated by limiting beliefs. And beliefs are statements about what people want, what your community wants, how they're going to respond. And one of the most common limiting beliefs, when we're introducing new activities and paradigms and rituals, really that's, that's our goal. Our goal is to popularize new rituals for human connection within our community so that it's not just this organic, shallow talk all the time, but there's real intentional space that's created in our group where people connect deeper, not just through conversation, they, they develop emotional connections, okay? So the fear, the fear that we're going to make people uncomfortable, the limiting belief is this, if I introduce new things, I will make people uncomfortable and get rejected. That's the limiting belief. And to an extent, you will make people uncomfortable. But if people feel uncomfortable, they're going to grow. And what happens typically, and I've experienced this thousands of times, people will feel uncomfortable for about two minutes or so and then they'll feel amazing and they'll feel alive. So there is a little discomfort hump that happens, but what's over that hump is aliveness and emotional expression and vulnerability. And so I wanna ask you this, are you refraining from introducing new activities into your community because you're afraid of making people uncomfortable? Is that true for you? likely is because it's still true for me. I'm still afraid of making people uncomfortable as well. All right, what's another limiting belief about connection? Well, it's this. I must be familiar with the group I'm with for me to be vulnerable and playful and joyful with them. This is an, a, a, an unnecessary condition familiarity so how does this belief manifest oh i i shouldn't ask personal questions just yet because I, I don't know them very well oh i i shouldn't ask them to to dance or i i shouldn't ask them to meditate with me because they don't know who i am i don't know them i i, I might make i might intrude i might make them uncomfortable so you see the point here a lot of community facilitators they don't believe they should try new things because there isn't that familiarity in the group yet. And of course, familiarity, it's a fertile soil for new activities and new experiences. But what I've noticed traveling the world with this speaker is I can create that sense of familiarity in 10 minutes. I can create a shared context in 10 minutes where people like each other and participate together. And so this belief that familiarity is a requirement is preventing you from moving forward 
as quickly as you could. And there's no rush to introducing new connection rituals, but there is a consequence. And the consequence is people are less mentally healthy because we know that when people connect emotionally and joyfully and authentically, that's when they gain the most mental health benefits from human connection. So we've talked about two beliefs so far. If I try new things, I'm gonna make people uncomfortable. To try new things, people need to know me. I need to know them. The group needs to be familiar with one another. Okay, there's one more belief I wanna emphasize. And it's the belief that some people are just introverted and they don't, they don't wanna connect. Ooh, did you just say that, Jack? Are you hating on the introverts? Well, guess what? I'm an introvert. I spend most of my time alone and I get lots of energy from being alone. In fact, I read right here every night alone and I love it. I feel so energized. Okay. The limiting belief is that introverts are not going to like this. Only extroverts are gonna like this. Well, in my experience, with all the events I've done, extroverts and introverts are gonna have the same level of discomfort. We're socially hardwired beings. We all have social anxiety. We all, we're, we all find things to be too much. So, introverts, you know, so-called introverts, they don't get as much energy from human connection and crowds as extroverts. Now, I believe this to be false because there are universal brain circuits that activate when we move in synchrony, when we are emotionally seen and heard, and when we are celebrated. Okay, so it's holding us back. It's holding us back from trying new activities because we believe that our groups just not like that. We're just not wired for that form of connection. That, that's, that's how I hear introverts also describing their experience. I just, I just don't like being seen by a group, right? That's, that's what we often hear. Like we don't wanna put an introvert on the spot, right? That, that is not okay. Well, what happens? What happens when you put an introvert on the spot and people demonstrate understanding and they witness them and they appreciate them, what happens? Well, they feel amazing and their own belief about being put on the spot changes. So what I'm getting at here is this limiting belief that introverts don't enjoy these things comes up because our gathering spaces, they're not designed well. They're not designed well for introverts or extroverts. When we design nourishing, psychologically safe spaces, introverts can thrive and you can put them on the spot and they'll feel great and celebrated. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this point uh, specifically because I uh, don't have much social anxiety and of course there's, there's socially anxious introverts and then there's introverts who just want to read books like me. I often cancel invitations so I can read books and hang out in my living room. <laughs> so the final limiting belief is that my group, they're just not wired for joy. They're just not wired for play. They're not wired for energy. They're just, they're not high energy beings. Well, that completely ignores human nature. Like the brain is designed to feel nourished by joy and energy. And there are certain ways to activate it universally among humans. And that's called social neuroscience. And that's what I validated in 15 different countries throwing dance parties all around. So assess your limiting beliefs that you have and break them down, break them down. 
and then introduce those new norms in your community responsibly, consensually, give your participants accurate expectations, and you will see that introverts, extroverts, familiar, unfamiliar, they will all thrive and they will enjoy it because every human is craving emotional, deeper connection. Booyah. Check out my lab. It's where I post 80% of my content. You are missing all of it if you just watch me on YouTube. Thanks so much and disagree with me. I'd love to hear.